Today I want to take a look at how to build a SharePoint framework SPFX web part using Angular CLI. Here we have a diagram of the concept. Uh, first we have Angular CLI itself, normal command line project using ng space for the scaffolding to make things like components and services and get consistent naming, TypeScript, unit testing, all of the great things the Angular CLI command line gives us. Then we have SharePoint Framework, which of course is for bringing web parts into SharePoint Online and provides a management framework for deployment, versioning, properties, site level app catalog, tenant level app catalog, and then the SPFX Workbench. Our goal is to build a web part with Angular CLI, leveraging elements, so that the display in SPFX simply becomes one custom HTML tag and that is the placeholder that the entire Angular CLI project will live in. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and make a new empty folder. This is going to be our root folder. Underneath this, we're going to have two different folders, one for Angular CLI, one for SPFX. Here we'll go ahead and run the ng new command and feed in our project name. We'll answer no to routing and choose SCSS for our style framework. And with the project created, we'll go ahead and type in ng serve. And we do need to move down one folder into the one hosting package JSON, Angular JSON. That's what lets us know it's an Angular CLI project. So now we can do ng serve, and this will start a localhost 4200 website showing the default project. Awesome, ng-serve completed, and we can see our Angular demo app is running. Just to check things out, we can actually come over here and open VS Code, make a change to the home page, and confirm that it's coming through. So here inside of our Angular CLI project, we go under Source, we look at Assets, we look at App, we find the App Component HTML. This is sort of the default page. SPFX demo is running. Search for the word running. And we'll change this to something different. We'll go ahead and save our text. That's good. And automatically with Browser Sync, it reloads on the right hand side. And we can see our new text. Demo app is looking awesome. So this gives us your Angular CLI project. Now let's go over to the SPFX world. Here we're in our root folder looking at our Angular CLI project we just created. And now we want to go ahead and open up SPFX. And with our app running, we want to go ahead and add support for Angular elements. Now to do that, we're going to break out of the ng serve. We're going to run ng add at Angular forward slash elements. This is going to add Angular elements to our current CLI project. There's a couple changes we need to make inside of the code. So we'll go ahead and say yes to proceed. We'll get over here where we can see our code a little bit better. Excellent. And there's a few changes we want to make around app components. So in the app module TS, right now, by default, it has a bootstrap for app component. We actually want to change that a little bit and get rid of the word bootstrap and change that to entry components. That's right. And at the top, we want to add a little bit of code for importing, we're going to import create custom element from Angular Elements. That's right. Looks good. And then we want to make a few changes to this export class. So I've added a block of code here to export a class app module, bringing in a private injector and creating a custom element named app SPFX. So this will be our custom tag. In the end, on the SPFX side, it will look a little bit like this, where we have a open close HTML tag called app SPFX. Now one thing underlined in red here is injector. We can right click on that for quick fix, add it to the import at the top. That's just one extra module we want to load from Angular core to resolve the naming. Beautiful. Now we have our changes with app module. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is the npm install document register elements. So this is part of what we're going to need to support Angular elements. 
Right now we've made changes only to app module TS. Now we're doing another NPM install. We'll see it come back with no errors. It also shows us the HTML5 logo. And we want to come over and make some changes to app component TS up uh, one more level. And over here, we're going to have to look at the selector. It's not app-root anymore. We've changed the name of that. Again, this is the part we want to match up to be our custom tag, which is going to be app SPFX. So now that that name is matching, we want to go and take a look at one of the scripts items in the Angular JSON file. So we'll come down here, search for the word scripts. Now, on my project, by default, this is actually showing up in two different places. We've got two hits here on the search results. So I'm going to update both of them and add a reference to the document register. So we're going to expand the JSON array, add one item within, come down, find the next JSON array, add one item within, right-click, format, save. Beautiful. And on the index HTML where everything's displayed, we're going to change this from app root to app SPFX. Go ahead and save there. And back on our command line, we're going to do ng serve to open up the website. Now, all right, now we have Angular CLI loading at localhost 4200. It has our custom HTML. And all of this is happening by a special tag called app. SPFX, which we have living over here in index HTML. So the reason we went through the extra steps with Angular Elements is to get support for this custom HTML tag, because that is going to be the way that we insert this to SharePoint Framework. So now that we have Angular CLI the way we want, we're going to come over to our root folder, which at the moment just has the one folder underneath it. But this is where we're going to go ahead and make a second folder for SPFX. For that, we type in yo at Microsoft forward slash SharePoint to go ahead and scaffold a new project. There'll be a couple of questions that Yeoman will ask us about the name of the solution and those sort of things. I like to use the exact name of the Angular CLI project, but add dash SPFX because this is kind of secondary. We're going to say create a subfolder with the name, uh, no for full tenant. Permissions APIs not shared with other components. Well, we'll say yes, it may need that. We'll choose web part for the type. And what is your web part name? We'll go ahead and give it the exact same name as our Angular CLI project. I'll skip a description, say no JavaScript framework, and that's how it creates the SPFX. So there's a few questions here. Essentially, for folder name, we want to do a suffix here for the folder of adding dash SPFX. And our folder hierarchy is going to look um, a little bit like this. We sort of have our root level, and then underneath it, we have two different ones. The root is really just more for organization and browsing. And then we have our Angular folder, which is really all the ng commands. And then we have our SPFX folder, which is where you're going to see all of the different yo commands, well, and gulp. So when you think about what am I typing, what folder am I working in, there's one root folder just for organization, but the working folders are Angular where we type ng and SPFX where we type yo or gulp. And hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, with the project created, we'll go ahead and open VS Code in a second window that lets us take a look at the source that was created. There's our source. And we know that it's a SPFX project. Beautiful. So we'll go ahead down one more level here and get things lined up. So in our root folder, we now have two. We'll go down into the SPFX folder, take a look. And sure enough, this is going to be a SharePoint framework project. And you can kind of tell that from a few things. It has gulp file. It has, of course, in the package JSON, all sorts of at Microsoft slash SP. And under the source, we have something called web parts. That's a pretty good giveaway, too. So here is our SPFX project. We're going to go ahead and type gulp serve just to make sure it was installed in a working state and we have something we can look at. So now we have localhost 4321 running with SharePoint Workbench. And we can go ahead and add our web part, and we're able to see it. If we come back over to the source code, same sort of thing we did with CLI. Just want to come into the web part itself, and let's see, experiences. 
customize experiences. Here's our render function. Yeah, we can take something like this. Maybe go ahead and comment out the code so that it's not running the default. Change that to hello world and let's save. Come back over. Maybe remove the web part. Add it back again. And let's see what we have. There we go. Hello world is rendering. Description field. Cool stuff. So we know that the SPFX was installed successfully and we're able to make changes to it. Now what we really want to do is more than hello world, we want to put our custom tag app SPFX in here. We'll do it with the open close. And I'll go ahead and take out hello world, remove that part. And above interface, we want to add a little bit more up here for import commands. And we're going to be importing a handful of files, six in total, that come out of our Angular CLI build. So for that, we'll come back over to our first command line where we were running ng-serve. We're going to do ng-build, and it'll create the dist folder, the distribution folder, which is where we have the different components that we're going to need. And here, ng-build is running. It's generating the browser application bundles. So this will create a folder called dist with the different artifacts. Opening File Explorer, this completed successfully. It shows us a handful of different files it created, five in total. And we have a new folder called dist for distribution. We go inside of there, we have one subfolder. And yeah, here we can see a handful of items. These five are really going to be the keys that we want to use for import on the SPFX side. So really it's the output of Angular CLI that becomes the import for SPFX. So coming over to in SPFX, we're going to go ahead and put together some of our import commands and bring in all five. Now the way I like to get the file names is to use Control shift right-click on the file, and do copy as path. That'll go ahead and bring in the entire file path, which is pretty cool, very helpful. Kind of saves us a little bit of typing. But we don't really want to use the full path the way we know of it in a um, kind of Windows file system way. We want to use more of a relative path in a web notation way. So we want to use dot dot slash for kind of move up one folder. So instead of this C drive backslash sort of stuff, we want to do dot dot slash a few times to move it up to that higher folder, that more uh, kind of root level working folder. And then we want to change these backslashes to forward slashes, moving from command line to the web. And once we have those in place, that's kind of the pattern we want to follow. And we want to go ahead and clone this out a few more times because there's a few different files we need. Now that we have the pattern set, I like to come over here and hit F2 to rename. That'll copy the file name into clipboard. Hit F2, Control C, F2, Control C. Just sort of a simple way of grabbing the file name because it has this uh, custom checksum on it. And we'll go ahead and take that, and bring those over. Now one note on the styles CSS file, I'm actually going to change that to .js for all of these. All five should have a .js on the suffix to get the reference pointed over correctly. And on the DIST, I'm going to rename it to .js. Now, why rename the style sheet to .js? It makes the TypeScript compiler kind of treat it like JavaScript, bring it into the project, and allow it to be imported. And then the content itself comes through on the front end. Now, normally you will have one more file in here called vendor.js. My project doesn't have that because I have not included any third-party vendor items. But just to note, it's perfectly normal to have six files. This demo only has five because our Angular CLI project does not yet have any vendor dependency. All right, so as I've been making changes, um, Gulp Serve was actually still running in the background here. So we're going to add a new web part, SPFX Angular Demo, and there it is. Yes, Angular CLI is looking awesome. This is our custom tag. So really the only thing that SPFX is seeing is this single tag here of open app SPFX, close app SPFX. 
looking awesome, has all the different interfaces and styling. And what SharePoint Framework is doing is it's bringing in that single tag on the render function, but it's getting the definition from all the imports that Angular CLI provided. So we really haven't done too much with SharePoint Framework beyond importing the dist folder and then down here is really affecting the render with what HTML tag we want. But this gives us the ability to do our work in Angular CLI, include it into SPFX, and get the rich debugging tools that both sides offer. Thanks for watching.